This yes. is uh, this is John Matt Fails. I'm sure some of you are well aware of his channel. He's trying to introduce uh, spiral dynamics and uh, some of the integral models of evolution and consciousness, for um, mostly for for the layman, for someone who's never heard of this stuff before. And um, we're gonna try to uh, collaborate a little bit here on uh, a specific uh, topic, that of eugenics. And uh, really a controversial thing. I mean, um, a lot of people have a gut reaction that it's uh, mm -hmm. undoubtedly, undeniably a negative, terrible thing that no one should even talk about. Um, you know, the image that comes to mind for a lot of people is Nazism and That's right. uh, fascism and uh, the government trying to control who can have babies. And this is an issue that we are going to have to reconsider as a uh, civilization because the technology is getting to the point where um, it's going to be possible to choose, you know, the traits of your of your child. A parent can go to yep. a clinic where they can manipulate the genetic sequence and give you a child with blue eyes, with more intelligence, more athleticism, whatever. Um, and so eugenics will be taking place whether we as a civilization understand its repercussions or not. Yep. So the question is, how do we govern something which will be taking place regardless of whether or not we want it to? Yeah, and I think Matt talked about this, is what really comes into, and we're going to use spiral terms now, and if you're not familiar, um, you can go to my channel and check out some of the uh, videos containing these, or just go look up the uh, 1996 book by Don Beck, Spiral Dynamics. But really it's going to come down to worldviews, and the worldviews that are interpreting this technology, which comes from more of an orange and a scientific achiever mode, Technology, well, if, if the worldview that governs this very technology isn't at a second tier, we're talking yellow or turquoise, then we might be in with some uh, some problems here. What do you think? We're, yeah, we're already facing some of these issues, like with um, biotechnology companies like Monsanto uh, patenting the genomes of different crops, like you know corn and wheat and so forth. That That's right. Indigenous populations have been really working for thousands of years to get to the point they're at now. Monsanto comes in, takes that genome, alters it a little bit, and all, all of a sudden they own it, and then they redistribute these seeds, um, which are all genet genetically identical. So the diversity is completely collapsed, and it makes the whole planet uh, vulnerable to uh, catastrophe if, if a microbe of some kind attacks this specific yeah. genome. Then our entire uh, corn crop across the world is wiped out. And I, I like when you talk about the entire planet um, dealing with you know, ecosystems and whatnot, because that is clearly not coming from a green point of view. That's coming from an orange, unhealthy orange, is exactly what Matt's talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's just the fast way to say it, is unhealthy orange. And then, so you, so you know what you're dealing with now. And then you go into the details, and you get in the meat and potatoes of the issue, like what Matt's talking about. Right. Um, but, it, but you have to have a starting point. Where are we at on this map of territory, of our consciousness? And it's fundamentally orange, and if it's uh, it's unhealthy, if it's infringing on the rights of the other memes, if it's getting in the way, and yes, getting in the way of the planet is going to affect the other memes, because we're all living here. The memes being the worldviews, those come about in cultures and peoples, or if there's no planet to uh, to sustain these worldviews, then there's no worldviews. So yes, that's unhealthy right. orange. Um, the cure to that usually is green comes in. The green comes in the consciousness, it comes in the territory, you see uh, people more effective with their cars, more clean energy, right. green technology, you hear about it. Um, now, would, would green be the ones to really, that we want to lead this technology with? I'm not sure, because they have their blind spots too. Right, um, well, I think, you about that? I think what we talked about at the beginning, how there's this gut reaction against uh, even talking about possible uh, benefits of eugenics. I think that usually comes from people who are agreeing with Senator gravity because right. you say how could there be some genetic code that's better than another genetic code? I mean, how you know how can we really look at nature hierarchically like this to say that there are some evolutionary paths which are better than others? Um, but then clearly clearly when you take the big picture into consideration, nature moves through various stages of complexity and as they get more complex they become more valuable only because say a human being is more capable of recognizing uh, the value of the planet as a whole than uh, an ant is. That's right. I like to say that a human can actually care about somebody halfway across the world. Mm -hmm. Dogs and cats can't do that. Right. Dogs and cats, excuse me. 
But I think that kind of, that quick analogy kind of tacks it in. Right. And, uh, makes it home plate, I guess. Um, but I, I think you bring up a good point with Green having the humanistic side. And Green is, we're talking that humanistic, the relativistic kind of attitude. Um, very compassionate. And that's key, but sometimes it gets overly compassionate to the point where it's almost zealous. It's almost rigid. Right. You have to be this way or else, is what Greens, and they have their nose up while they're doing it. <laughs> but they can't see that they're trying to be holier than thou while they're doing that. Right. So that's why I say it's really got to be from a, a yellow, integral, or holistic perspective that this is even going to be um, acceptable in our society, right. at least in this day and age. But the way things are going, I mean, orange is so powerful with... They got the ca- they got the cash, and unless you get I, this is what I believe unless you get second tier or at least green going into second tier yellow leaders mm-hmm. that already have the money that have already done this orange phase right if you don't have the leaders then it's going to be it is going to be hard to change anything definitely um, you know hopefully with Obama in office we'll start to see a shift into more enlightened leadership um, but uh, you know getting back to this question of eugenics I think. It's clear that uh, the way evolution has worked prior to the human being into our self-consciousness, it was survival of the fittest and the organisms which were most adapted to uh, whatever the environment happened to be at that point. Not to neglect the role that the organisms have in shaping their environment, but um, there was definitely a struggle um, for survival and the best in the varying ways that that term can be interpreted, survived. Um, And what's changed now, and why this question of eugenics is so important, is that we are aware of the evolutionary process. Evolution has become aware of itself. And as you you put it... I I put it, Mike, he has the long technical word for it, which is needed for academia. But for our our bigger audience, it's evolution saying, here's the keys. You're a big boy or big girl now. Go. So, and and if you can relate to when you got your first keys, you yeah you're out there, but you can make a lot of mistakes being a no, young new driver. And I think there's probably going to be some mistakes, some casualties along the way. There are always bigger mistakes. Pictures. That's how you that's how you learn. And I think we're already making mistakes that we can learn from. Like Monsanto is, a, is an example I mentioned earlier. Um, this is eugenics, uh, not taking place on a human level, but on uh, the level of, of plants and the food that we eat. And it's, it's good um, what Monsanto is doing to our, uh, the diversity of our um, food because it produces money for their shareholders. And that's the context in which they're interpreting the goodness of the genetic alterations they're making. And I think we need uh, a higher um, or a more developed worldview to interpret how best to use the technologies that are available to us because in the wrong hands, they're very dangerous. Um, but in the right hands, they can be a catalyst for the further unfolding of uh, spirit in nature, you could say, if you put it in Ken Wilber's terms. Um, Because the the further along we get in the evolutionary process, the more what Wilber calls spirit uh, manifests itself in that natural world. And you can use Eckhart's word, source. Source. Or Roshi's big mind and... They all kind of point to the same thing. Right. Um, but yeah, that what you're saying was relating back into leadership. And something I've heard is, are these leaders going to change? And it looks like, no. But here's the thing, they have kids. And the kids, the young ones, usually are more open. Mm-hmm. Talk about a young president being more open. It took a younger president to do this. It's going to take, I think, I'm going off on my own. But you don't have to subscribe to this belief. But I think that if I'm going to use some trajectories, some vision logic, it's going to be that we're going to have to see some funerals and have to see some young guys, some young guns and girls, gals, yeah. take the reins and saying, you know, this is not the way things are going to be anymore. We're going to be more responsible than our grandparents and our parents were. Um, but it's on their efforts. and We learn from their mistakes so we don't make the same mistakes in the future. And I think that's what humans have done on a macro scale. Don't you know? I mean, we've learned from a tribe X not to do that. So yeah. tribe Y can survive and, and Flourish. That's how you learn. You learn from your, your mistakes. And uh, to uh, summarize, and I'll probably butcher it, but uh, something Max Planck said, um, referring to science and scientific progress, but it can you know, apply to human progress in general, it's 
not uh, it's the younger people um, that make progress in science. The old people have their theories that are fixed, and then when they die, they make room for the younger generations that are more creative and more willing to change mm -hmm. to take the reins um, and lead them in a completely different direction. Yeah. Um, so what we're saying is Galloway geezers are coming. <laughs> no, no, there are some some I think there's some old people that have the young at heart. Uh, I think the point to this, but young at heart mentality. These are the guys that I think me, me and Matt want to emulate when we're old geezers. We want to have that open mindedness still that be able to be to be you know, not childish but childlike, flexible, willing to learn. That's right. Yeah. The children, some of the most flexible people. You act, literally, they're flexible. They can bend and shape all these things. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a great metaphor for their open mindedness. All right, so I guess we should wrap it up uh, to avoid having a two-part video. So let us know what you think and uh, drop us a line or some comments or a response video. Thanks for listening.